Hello and welcome to the June 2020 update to Fusion 360 Manufacturing. This round will kick things off with some updates to the tool library in Fusion 360. In addition to getting a beautiful new interface, the new tool library has many of the old features we know and love, as well as several major enhancements. Starting with some housekeeping. Showing and reordering columns is now behind the settings gear icon. Click on it and you can check columns to show them or uncheck to hide them and easily drag to reorder the list, which will update the column order. Filters are now found on the right side of the dialog, and commands like edit, duplicate, renumber tools, and more are found on the top. In terms of usability, you can now copy a holder and then select multiple tools to apply that holder to, significantly streamlining the process of adding or changing tool holders. The addition I'm most excited for in the new tool library is the ability to store multiple cutting parameter presets. You can edit, add, and rename these presets directly in the tool library. These parameters don't only include feed and speed values, but can also include step down and step over as well when the boxes are checked. Then when creating a toolpath, you can select your preset of choice from the dropdown in the tool tab or select custom to make edits to that specific toolpath. To help you get the most out of these new enhancements, we've also added a Haas tooling library to the online tool libraries. Download the library for Fusion 360, import it, and it's already pre-populated with cutting parameters for different materials and cut types, pulled from Haas cutting data PDFs. There is also a live link that goes directly to the Haas website, where you can purchase the tool, making it easy to restock or find more detailed information on that tool. In FFF Additive, we made some improvements to the print setting library, including filters for layer height and filament diameter, to help you more quickly sort through your available print settings. If you're looking for more detail on setting up your own printer, check out the live stream linked in the upper corner, where Thomas Stock takes you through the details of FFF. We also added gyroid infill, which mimics a natural structure found in butterfly wings and cell membranes and has an incredibly high strength at low densities and is especially resistant to shear stress. On the turning side, we added an option for even step downs to the profile roughing operation. This is most useful on parts with diameter steps, where it's optimal to evenly distribute passes between each step. Even step downs helps improve surface finish and part quality with predictable tool deformation, consistent chip formation, and equal heat dissipation across cuts. For diameter steps, it breaks the geometry into regions at each step and then calculates the even step down by region, such that it doesn't exceed the maximum step down parameter in the passes tab. If we compare to a profile roughing operation with even step downs unchecked, there are some awkward areas where the toolpath doesn't align to the geometry. For more complex geometry, the regions are defined at inflection points or tapered faces. For more detail on even step downs and how we handle various geometries, check out the blog post linked in the description. In probing, we expanded the range of geometry we support for work coordinate system and geometry probing. Now you can select a partial bore or boss to generate a three point probe on the arc. When used with work coordinate system probing, this will shift the work coordinate system using the center of the partial boss or bore. In probe geometry, this will verify the size and position of the partial boss or bore. We also added support for angled surface probing. This allows you to probe vertical faces angled in the X or Y direction. When used with WCS probing, this will rotate the WCS using a G68 or a C-axis rotation. Note the G68 may be a paid option and will need to be enabled on your machine. Refer to your machine's manual for more information. When used with probe geometry, this will verify the angle of the vertical face relative to the X or Y axis. Finally, manual inspection is coming to public preview. Check the manual inspection box in Preferences, Preview Features to get access, and then watch the video linked in the upper corner to see a detailed tutorial from Richard on how to use manual inspection to create inspection plans, record measurement results, and generate shareable inspection reports, all within Fusion 360. That's it for this time. Be sure to check out the What's New for Design and Engineering, and of course, let us know what you think in the comments and subscribe for more Fusion 360 videos. Cheers.